Hey guys, welcome back. I'm sitting here in front of two MacBook Airs, one from 2012 and one from 2015. The one from 2015 I actually just purchased off of Facebook Marketplace as a dead machine for $50. So stay tuned and I'll show you how to get the latest version of Mac OS running on an older MacBook like this for free and how to make it run well. Alright guys, so to start this process, the first thing you're going to need is an old school MacBook, probably your MacBook charger, and a USB flash drive. And um, you can use a SanDisk. I actually really like the SanDisk flash drives. I think they're some of the best out there. If you don't have a SanDisk flash drive on hand, not to worry. Any flash drive will work that's about 8 gigs or larger. Typically the ones I find these days are 32 gigs. So we're gonna set the flash drive aside for now because there's steps we have to take before we even get started with that. Okay, so the first step here is to get into your web browser, which in my case here is Safari. Um, if you're in an older version of Mac OS, I'd highly recommend downloading Google Chrome. Uh, this was originally set to High Sierra and I went through this process, but I made a boo-boo in the initial video, so I'm recreating it here. Um, anyway, go to, just go to Google, and you're going to search for Open Core Legacy Patcher. Right? Just like that. And that'll take you to GitHub. And then once you're at GitHub, you'll hit Getting Started. And then you go to Download and Build Mac OS Installer. And then Open Core Legacy Patcher Release Apps. And then what you want to do is just make sure you're on the latest version. So 2.4.0 is what the latest version is currently. You'll scroll down to assets and then you'll just download the open core patcher.pkg. And do you want to allow downloads on GitHub? You say yes, allow, and then just download the file. And then once that's done, we'll launch. Okay. So we've got the installer package downloaded now. Let's go ahead and open that up. And we'll install, install, and you have to put a password in. And the password for this machine is just password because it requires a password to make any changes. Installation was successful. There we go, so we'll just say keep it. I don't mind keeping the installer. Then we can close the internet and go to our apps and then go open up Open Core Patcher. Hmm. Somehow it feels like this whole setup is really tilted. Don't know. As long as you guys can see it, I don't really care that much. Um, okay, so what we're going to do first is build and install Open Core. So you'll start by doing that and said so finish building your Open Core configuration. Install to disk and we'll say yes. And we want to pick this disk right here, which is my 32 gig flash drive. So that's the SanDisk 3.2 Gen 1. And you'll say sure, yep, install on that partition. Reboot to apply, we'll say ignore for now. And we'll return to the main menu. Then we're going to create a macOS installer. Now these macOS installers are important because they are uh, what you're going to use. They're specific to your machine, or at least your, your configuration is specific to your machine. So um, I am saying Sequoia. Now the original installer here has Sequoia on it because um, I did create that, but I'm going to redo it because I'm not 100% confident that I did it right the first time. So this takes a little bit because it's 15.7 gigabytes of data, but we are connected to my 5 gigahertz network here, So, and I have fiber, so it's going to download fairly quickly. I'm going to let this continue to download, and I'll be right back with you once it's done.
Okay, and so now it says create Mac OS installer. You're just gonna click yes. And then you'll select, in your case, it probably won't say install Mac OS Sequoia. It'll probably just say your uh, drive volume. So you'll select that and then it'll ask you to pick a partition. So you select your partition there and you say, are you sure you want to erase the disk? And you just say yes. And so for me, this already had install Mac OS Sequoia on here. We're just redoing it for the sake of this, just because I messed up the first time. This process here can take about 20 minutes. All right, so now you can see it says successfully created the macOS installer. Installer created successfully. Would you like to continue to install open core to this disk? And you just say yes. And then you say install to disk. We've already done the installation of open core. So, I mean, we'll select the disk anyway, but should work just fine. So we're just creating an EFI partition on the drive. And now we should be able to reboot and actually do this install. Press and hold the option key. I forgot to do that. We're gonna we're gonna turn this off again. I forgot to press and hold the option key. Okay, here we go. Okay, so that brings you into this menu here which you'll go to EFI boot, which is gonna be this guy right here. The reason I have a second one is just because I partitioned that disk weird. Uh, but then what you'll say is install Mac OS Sequoia. And then you'll let your installation run. Well, not quite yet. You still have to boot to the installer. Okay, so we've booted to the installer. We're actually going to use disk utility and we're gonna clean off that. Well, maybe. Let me look at disk in disk utility and see what we've got going on here. Mac SSD, okay, we're fine. I'm leaving disk utility alone. We'll go back and we'll say install Mac OS Sequoia. Say continue. And then it should pop up our terms of service. Next, like do we accept them or not? Okay, we're gonna say agree, even though we didn't read it, and we still agree, even though we didn't read it. Uh, select the disk where you want to install Mac OS. We're gonna say Mac SSD, and continue. And then we're just gonna let it run its installer. And I'm gonna go get dinner with my brother, so I'll be back. Okay. We're finally done and going through the initial setup here. Let's say continue on the analytics. 
Software update complete. Your Mac has been updated to Mac OS Sequoia. Future software updates will be automatically downloaded and installed for you as they are released. You can manage this in software update settings. I'll say continue. Welcome to Mac. Continue. Okay, here we are. We're in Sequoia now. Now, um, there's one final step here before you go off and just start enjoying your operating system because as soon as I were to pull that flash drive down here in the corner, you would uh, start to see that things just don't work the way they're supposed to. Um, you wouldn't be able to boot back to Sequoia. Your operating system would stop functioning, that kind of thing. So there are patches that have to be completed after the install of OpenCore Legacy Patcher. So we're gonna go to OpenCore Patcher, and we're gonna do our post-install patches. So you can see post-install root patch installs hardware drivers, patches, and patches for your system after installing a new version of Mac OS. So we'll say post-install root patch. And we're gonna say start root patching. And this will essentially allow us to um, install this without having any sort of, without having to have this guy plugged in, the USB drive. OpenCore Legacy Patcher has detected that you are booting OpenCore from an external USB or drive. If you'd like to boot your Mac normally without a USB drive plugged in, you can install OpenCore to the internal hard drive. And then this is where you say, OK. And that way we don't have to press and hold option every time we reboot now. So it says, finished building your OpenCore configuration. Would you like to install OpenCore now? We say yes, install to disk. And so now it's going to install to our SSD. And we select our EFI partition here on the drive. And reboot to apply. That's the question that it's asking here. And we will just say, yes, reboot. Are you sure you want to restart your computer? Restart. And I am going to pull this because we don't need it anymore. No more USB drive. You can see I've got it right here. Now I'm not pressing option on this right now. Um, and I might actually need to. This might be my bad. Because it's not going to automatically pull it up and choose which OS to boot and that kind of thing. So I'm just going to press option right now. We'll see if that changes anything. Nope. See, it won't start automatically the very first time. You'll have to do that yourself. So I'm going to power this back down. I'm going to go here. We'll go power this back up. And then we'll press and hold option. And wait for our options to pop up. And then you say EFI boot and then Mac SSD. And then now, without the Without the flash drive plugged in, it should boot just fine. Back to our Mac OS Sequoia install. And we're back. Easy peasy. So I'll put in the password, which in this instance is just password. And it'll load us up.
don't be afraid. There's some weird behavior that happens right after you do your initial patch and everything, so... It's not unusual for things like this to happen, where the background disappears, it pops up the program, it'll all populate, it just takes a second. There you go. So now this isn't going to necessarily run slow, applications and everything will still operate the way that they're supposed to. I actually think that this is going to be really great for this computer, because it's a 2015, so we're kind of underutilizing it at this point. Um, but I do want to show you guys the About Mac section. I'm waiting for Open Core Legacy Patcher to actually finish doing what it was trying to do, I guess. There we go. There we go. Now that that's closed, I'll take you actually into the About This Mac. So you can actually see that this is indeed the... The 2.2 gigahertz with 8 gigs of RAM running Sequoia on this MacBook Air and if you look at the model on that MacBook Air there it says 13 inch 2015 so that's it um, again like I said this is this was not an originally originally a compatible model um, for Sequoia so what we've done here is take in this old technology and we kind of breathe this new life into it. Now, like I said, this is sort of an at your own risk type of deal because not everyone is going to want to do this. Um, applications and stuff on this still operate just fine. They launch quickly. Um, there's really no issues with upgrading to Mac OS, like the newest version. Um, sometimes you can notice a little bit of latency as opposed to like a super snappy Mac. You know, I probably wouldn't go installing half a million applications and expecting that everything that's is going to run beautifully all the time because that's just not the reality. You do still have the limitation of your hardware. However, you can have the newest operating system so that things aren't out of date. You're not putting yourself at risk security wise and you can enjoy the newer applications that are only compatible with a newer version of Mac OS. For example, phone mirroring is an option on here where you can you can mirror your phone. Um, you've got iMessage and things like that that weren't necessarily on High Sierra, but you know can be utilized in this newer version of Mac OS. So, if you like this content, guys, be sure to stay tuned because there's definitely going to be more of these videos. Um, old tech. Uh, new life. This is just the first of many. Um, I've got a whole bunch of old technology here that we're going to be kind of revamping, refurbishing, and getting out to people just so that they can enjoy it themselves. So um, it's not crazy to think that your old MacBook Air or MacBook Pro could still have new life. If you like the content, hit subscribe below, hit the like button, and be sure to uh, hit that notification bell as well so you get updated when the next part of the series does come out. Thanks for watching, guys.